Welcome back to the Planted Courtyard. My name is Ian Cook and for this episode we've gone down into my basement where last year I propagated all sorts of plants from seed cuttings and division. And I want to focus this week on a propagator. A propagator is a enclosed cabinet that you can elevate the humidity and the temperature and then you place in your cuttings and they magically put on roots or in this case seeds or or perennial divisions. Uh, wonderful activity to get involved with and the more you do it the better you'll get. You'll be able to grow more difficult plants with an increased degree of success. Now in this basement we have a furnace so the temperature is somewhere between 55 and 60 for the majority of the winter and that's a big help. The heat source I have inside here is just a little carpet strip of heat mat and that will get this cabinet up to somewhere between 70 and 75 on a consistent basis. And I'm going to show you how it works and why I think it's so effective. Now, you can buy your own propagator and there's nothing wrong with that. If that gives you what you want, go for it. I don't find them very robust. They will work, but they don't last very long. So I thought I wanted a bit more height and a bit more flexibility, so I designed and built my own. So I'm going to dismantle the one I made last year and show you the individual parts so that you can make your own. Now, this canopy here is see-through. It's translucent, really. So any daylight that might be near will actually get to the plants, and that is advantageous. You could use carpet, you could use cardboard, you could use a blanket. They're not ideal. The carpet uh, will sag, the blanket will let out heat, and the cardboard will get wet. So you really are limited to a, a flexible plastic. This is solar wrap, and I use this to make my greenhouse. There's a video on how I made that on the uh, Planted Courtyard YouTube channel. So this is a proven product, very tough, very robust, and made for growing plants. Now at the back here, the, the back of it is just fastened to a wooden rail, which I'll show you in a moment. So that is permanently attached, and then this end will lift up and allow you to check your plants. Um, I've got these little pockets that you can see here where I put a weight and that would pull this down and keep it nice and taut and keep the heat in. Now let's talk about the heat source. You'll need to have a timer like this. I would set mine to come on at 6 uh, in the morning and it would switch off at night at 9 p.m. So you plug this into your mains power and then set the time. Have an extension with multiple sockets and in here you would plug your heat source which is the mat and also the light. And that means it's completely automatic. You'll come down once a day to check it and you'll have all the success in the world. Now, when it comes to using a unit like this, you want to put it in a place where you don't have to move it. Uh, I designed this so that I could pick up the box and I can move the whole thing. But, um, you know, if, if it can go into a spot and stay there, that's fine. Because it has its own light source, it could be in a room that's dark. It could be anywhere. It's got its own light source, so that's the energy to make the plants grow. So it's very flexible from that regard. You don't need to have prime conditions. Now, I'm going to take off this cover to show you the inner workings. Now here you can see we've got a couple of demo pots. The way I would water it is by using a sprayer. I'd never use a watering can. Little sprayer lets you wet the leaves and the stems and the stalks without drenching the growing medium. If you think about it, you put cuttings in a little small pot. They have no roots. Where's the water going to go? There isn't this great need for it. So really, you just want to dampen the surface to keep it nice and humid. And the little sprayer is by far the best way to do that. Now, what we have is... Uh, when you start to grow your own plants, you'll inherit all sorts of pots, all different sizes, all different shapes. And that's ideal because you'll have plants that you want to grow that are different sizes and shapes. You might give an, be given a, um, a root of a peony and it won't fit in this size, but it will fit in this size. Well, you could stick it in here and leave it outside, or you could stick it in a pot like this and give it a bit of a G up with some heat and start to get it growing. Obviously, you take it out when it starts to grow nicely. but your pot sizes will not be uniform. Don't go for symmetry because it just won't work. So we'll just set those down. 
what else do we have in here? This is the heat mat. I've had this four years. I can't remember how much it cost. I want to say it was 30 or 40 dollars. So what's that? Less than 10 dollars a year. I think that's a fair return. Uh, it's waterproof and you lay it on a surface, put your compost and growing medium in here with your cutting, set it on that and all that heat will be uh, transmitted into your pot. Now of course you can overlap it to get more plants. I did that on a number of occasions. I would come down and check my propagator once a day. Take a few plants out, put a few plants in, rearrange it, pick up any leaves that had fallen off. So it's not as if you leave that plant like that for six weeks and it never gets moved. It'll come over here, it can be moved to a different spot, it can go down to a different height. So that's good. This little heat mat is all you need. You don't need to have a great big furnace firing up and then all that energy being wasted. Having the bubble plastic on top is a big help, but I would recommend this. This worked very well for me. We have got in here, this is our lighting source. This is an LED light and it's suspended from this ridge with two little hangers. Now I'm just going to plug this in so that you can see it working in all its glory. Um, it puts out a good amount of light, but here's what I learned the hard way. If you plug it in and that's what happens, it's because the little switch over here has not been turned on. So don't get angry and take it back to your favorite box store, only to have them plug it in and turn it on. So here you can see the light coming down and the different pieces of plywood that I have in here mean that I can set shelves at different heights. Uh, one of my biggest tricks I did was even invert plant pots to get my plant even higher to the light source. So if I've got some cuttings in there that are new and young, they might stay that close for three or four days and then I would bring them down a little bit. So you've got plant material at this height staggering all the way down and as you come away from that light, that light intensity diminishes greatly. If you were to put a little small two inch plant in a pot like this, drop it down there, what's that, that's over a foot, it's not getting the light you think it is. So if your cuttings are not growing, the chances are they don't have enough light. So do be mindful of that. So that's our pot sizes and the flexibility of our little wooden shelves. I also cut up some pieces of pink insulation and use those to go in here, which was very, very productive. Now I just want to unhook this to show you how easy it is. There we go. And then we'll, there you go. I want to show you this little switch. It's that little mark right there on and off. This will put out a little bit of heat. Um, nowhere near as much heat as a typical light, but also that heat would be trapped in our unit. So we'll just lay that down. Now, this is the part that's really important. This is the frame I made. Now if I lift it up, you see it's one piece. We've got a piece of pink insulation on this end, cut to the Gothic arch and then also cut the Gothic arch on the inside and I put another piece of plastic on the end. This was allowing a daylight to come in. And on the other end I've got a piece of plywood with a Gothic arch. So you can choose whichever you think most productive. The height from here to the top is about 18 inches and that just gives me a nice seating when I put the plastic on top. It pulls down nicely. This is the key. This just fits like that. No screws, no anything. It just clips onto the outer edge of our box and when I pick the box up the whole thing goes with it and it can't fall, it can't slip. Obviously you don't want to drop it. So this is something that probably in an hour you can make that. If you try it really hard you might do it even quicker. So we'll just set that down. And then we come down to the deck box. Now you could use a window box, and I know people that have done, but window boxes are quite narrow. They are not exactly 
uh, the right size. This is called a deck box and it's 27 inches from here up to here. This is a foot and it's got 9 inches of depth going down. It's a bit more durable, a little bit more spacious. And couple this with the height of our canopy, you get a full 9, another foot, what's that, 24. You've probably got 30 inches of height from the bottom of the light going all the way down here. And of that, 20 inches is going to be useful for growing plants. Another little trick is to put in a little notch here to take the cables so that your light cable can come out and your heating cable can come out in the same place. And you'll want to orient them so that they're in the same end exiting the same spot. Now, big trick with this is do not drill holes in it. It'll hold all the water that you put into here with your sprayer and it won't leak on carpet or a kitchen table. And if you find that this starts to flood with lots of water, you are giving it way too much. A little quarter inch in a corner or an eighth of an inch in a corner is fine. That'll actually help with the humidity. And if you wanted to, you could put in a layer of small pebbles, which would also help in keeping the atmosphere nice and moist. So that is the unit. Um, easy to use, very affordable to make, and very productive. So I hope to inspire you to go and make a unit like this. You can absolutely copy my plan and you will be growing plants in no time. It's a, a great product for kids to use. You can go down as a family, grow seeds, grow cuttings. And when you start to have success and you see those roots growing on the plants that you've just put in there, that's very, very rewarding and well worth doing. So good luck. I hope you like this video. Please like and subscribe. Tell your friends, tell your family. And I want you to go out and start growing your own plants. Now's the perfect time, we're in October. Now's the perfect time to go around your friends' gardens and start snagging a few cuttings and practicing. And the final point I'd like to make out to you is that you will start to cast your eye on some very nice choice plants and you'll think, well, if I could grow that, that would be just great. Don't practice on those expensive plants. Use easy, available plant material and get your skills down using that system. And then you can step up to the really expensive and exotic and choice and rare plants with a degree of success. So good luck, happy gardening, thank you for watching, bye for now.